A man or a woman is often defined based on what they can do. But what happens when you are judged on your physical or mental differences and it overshadows what you can really do? Or can it? This is why I am here today. Nice to meet you all. My name is Troy Goings, and I have high-functioning autism. And what autism is, by a short definition, it is a developmental disorder that is characterized by repetitive behaviors and problems with socialization. But what it means for me is that I am slow to start, but as a person, I am creative and wise for my age. While socially, I am inert. <laughs> Online's a different story for another time. I try to break this cycle as of lately, though, by going out into the community and going to new places. I work as an artist at Passionworks Studios, known for their passion flower, for about 10 years, if not more. As one of these artists, I help liberate and inspire people from all walks of life through the magic of art. I am no different. I am proud to be one of these amazing people. Everyone who goes there to Passion Work Studios have a different quirk that makes them unique. But besides the odds that were given against us, we can create such amazing things. Like so. <laughs> I was inspired to create art when I was only seven years old. I used to make so much drawings of my dreams and my family back then. I always wanted to be a policeman or an astronaut or a doctor. I would have never thought that one day I would end up becoming an artist. One day when I was just a child, watching cartoons and anime, I had a thought to myself, could I draw this? As I practiced more and more each day, I would soon find out my answer. It was obviously yes. As I continued watching more anime and cartoons, I slowly learned how to create my own style and started creating my own comics with nothing more than a pencil and a few pages of paper. As a young kid, I always felt I was different from other kids. While most kids would like to play outside in the playground or play in trade, trading cards in the yard, I would go to the local school library to go read. Most books that I read are educational in nature, with some children's books thrown in. Some of these books included astronomy, biology, chemistry, encyclopedias, and dictionaries. I had a few childish quirks, but in short, I was a smart cookie. But I was also antisocial. That would soon change on my high school year. During this short time I was in high school, I've drawn so many things. Things about people, animals, machinery, such as cars and cranes. And I would go to different art classes to pursue this as well as wood shop and cooking, as I thought cooking itself can also be an art. I soon graduated in 2008. My family and friends were so proud of me. On my first year after graduation, I was ultimately unemployed, but I still helped out around the house by cleaning up and taking care of the animals. It was one day while I was playing the Xbox did my sister-in-law Michelle answered the door on a hot August day. And to my surprise, I could recognize who it was. It was Christine Miles, my old school teacher. She was searching for me as she knew about my art ability and has gave me an opportunity to go join an art studio in town, Passion Work Studios. I happily agreed to this and so started my career as an artist. When I first came there at Passionwork Studios, I was ecstatic, as I'd never known there was an art studio in town. But at the same time, the studio itself was weren't aware, to say the least. I was 
still antisocial at that time, and back then I hardly talked to anyone as I simply didn't care, as I was always submerged in my headphones. Back then, I was only making my ideas alone. Most of them were only about half-baked and didn't really go full circle. I would end up making piles of art, so, and, but despite the disorganized chaos, I was still able to make lots of art. It was only when other people, such as the staff, decided to talk to me that I slowly learned to open up to people again. And I try to be relevant in hopes of having them see me not as a person with autism, but as a caring person and, and a bona fide artist. Then I would soon find out one day, seven years after me being an artist, did I find out that our studio was in disrepair a day hab program that was around that helped founded passion works was shutting down and at first i had no idea what was going on and we didn't know what we were going to do until one day another day hab up in delaware ohio put us under their wing which i would soon find out was both a crutch as well as a boon the boon was I got to be more well-known for my art. But at the same time, <clears throat> we nearly became a day hab, which really annoyed me, as I felt we're an art studio and not a day hab. Ever since this new day hab has taken over the payments for Passionwork Studios, I was tasked into making portraits, mostly of cats and dogs, with some wedding portraits and one instance of a woman and her pet parrot. But despite all the money I was bringing in, I was getting unhappy as it felt like I couldn't make my own stuff anymore. I would normally do fantasy as it was my forte. After the trend of pet portraits slowly died down, I eventually felt that I was without a purpose. I had a severe case of artist block. So I tried to go and make new art, but to no avail. Nothing was coming out. No ideas, no drawings, no concepts, nothing. I was near at the end of my rope when I decided to go take a break from it. And during this whole week of me taking this break, I went to watch TV shows that I would otherwise never have watched, played video games that I would otherwise never played, in hopes to find some new inspiration. But over time, as I made more doodles at my home, that I eventually regained my passion for art. And so I did. I ended up coming back there on a Monday morning. Things just got interesting after that. I got to be on the radio, both in a commercial and in a talk. I got to participate in surveys and also got to go two places such as Colorado, and that was fun. Who knew there was snow still around in July? And then one day I decided that we went to the museum <coughs> when we had an art show. I was ecstatic when I found out that my portrait of Rocco Mallory's pet in studio dog was on the wall, as well as a collaboration video. Seeing this portrait on the wall filled me with a new type of vigor and understanding, and also a small sense of pride. After this, we went 
to the gala, which was one heck of a party. Um, after we seen this video of a woman making art with nothing more than sticks and string, did a comedian come up there and done her routine. Shortly after what she put in, she then had us try out an exercise of the pros and cons in the forms of yays and boos. And so my friend no Noah went first. My friend and artist Noah went first, but his speech was kind of short to say the least. Uh, well, it was All right. Uh, at first, I wasn't going to even present mine. I felt it was too sappy. <laughs> <laughs> but as I seen more and more people come up and present their speech, I thought, what do I got to lose? <laughs> and so I went up there to present it. And what I've written on that paper and spoke moved people at an emotional and powerful level. I couldn't believe something that I've written on a whim actually made a powerful impact. And ever since then, even to this day, I came here today for this TED Talk to share my idea on what ha art has done for me. In the future, I hope I become more well-known for my art, maybe even go to art school and to one day live in a world of accessibility and to not be and to not be oppressed by people that are unaware to give people with disabilities a fighting chance. So in my conclusion, I believe my disability is no curse, but rather it was a card I was given. But the card itself isn't what defines you, but what the you do with this card is what matters. Thank you all for coming again today. Again, my name is Troy Goings, and I am happy to be here today to share you my idea for a better world for everyone. Thank you.